welcome to Career One Stop Tools to help your customers get back to work. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to one of our speakers for today. Don, take it away. Grace, thank you very much. And everybody, welcome to the Career One Stop webinar on really showcasing tools to help you as workforce professionals get your clients back into the workforce. Um, I'm one of the moderators here. My name is, again, is Don Houghton. I work at the Department of Labor National Office in the Employment and Training Administration. Um, and I'm probably doing the least amount of work during this, uh, this webinar. With me, I've got uh, three people from Career One Stop in the state of Minnesota. I've got Mike Ellsworth, who's a co-moderator with me, who will be answering questions in real time in the chat. So please, if you have questions, uh, please throw them into the chat, and Mike will answer them in real time. And anything that is, um, say, for the good of the group, we will use those questions during our question and answer period at the end of the presentation. Uh, we also have two presenters, uh, Trish Dahlman and Julie Remington, again, both with a Career One Stop in Minnesota. Um, quick note about today's webinar. The webinar itself will be approximately an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. And then we'll have 30 minutes to 20 minutes uh, to answer questions from the chat. Um, we do have a hard stop at 1230. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to our presenters and co-moderator to let them introduce themselves. Uh, Mike, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Don. Uh, I'm Mike Ellsworth. I'm the Program Director for Career One Stop. And uh, as mentioned, I will be answering questions in the Q&A section in real time. So if you do have those questions, I'll try to get them answered uh, as soon as possible. Tricia, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Hi, everyone. I'm Trisha Dahlman, and I am one of the managers on the Career One Stop team. I oversee outreach, marketing, and operations. I have 23 years of experience working in state government, and for most of those years, I've worked on state and national career information products like Career One Stop. We are really excited to represent our team today and bring you information about our tools. And I'll pass it over to Julie to introduce herself next. Thank you. I'm Julie Remington, and I'm content writer and usability analyst for Career One Stop. I write content for all the portals, all our different websites, tools, blogs, and I also write video scripts. I've got a background as a career counselor and as a planner for career services at nonprofits and <clears throat> the AJC system in Minnesota. Um, I also do conduct usability testing and user research to help ensure our language and our tools are as relevant and easy to use as possible. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Okay. Great. So and with with that, that, I, oh. I was going to say, Tricia, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Thank you. OK, thanks, Don. And thanks again to everyone for joining us today. The goal for today's webinar is to showcase 10 tools that workforce professionals can use to help people find jobs and get back to work. To get started, we wanted to share our reasons for putting this webinar together. And as we know, the landscape continues to shift since the pandemic. In the beginning, people were out of work, some for a long time, for a variety of different reasons. In the last few months, the economy has opened considerably. Many people have returned to work, whether that's at a job location or working remotely from home. According to the most recent data from the Department of Labor, 943,000 jobs were added nationally in July, and people are working, looking for work again. And some employers are having a difficult time finding workers in some cases and offering different types of incentives. We're especially seeing this for higher and mid-level wage earners. But at the same time, job losses persist for lower wage workers. So far, they have rejoined the workforce at lower rates, and many need greater support to get back to work. We're also seeing what national employment experts describe as a great reshuffle, as many people look to change their careers and seek out new opportunities that give them more flexibility, better pay, and better working conditions than their previous work provided. So what all this means is that you're dealing with a wide range of issues helping people get back to work. 
Today we're going to present the best tools and information from Career One Stop to help address all these types of customer needs. We'll show you how to help your clients and customers find job openings, navigate career options, whether that's back to a previous career or moving in a new direction, and how to connect with the specialized resources they may need to get back to work. So our agenda for today, we're going to start with a few minutes on an overview of the Career One Stop website. Next, we'll present the top 10 tools for Career One Stop for reemployment. And then, as Don said, we'll leave um, some time at the end to address any questions or themes um, from the chat that we're seeing. One last note before we get started, we're going to look at a lot of different tools today, and we want to make sure that you can find everything easily after the presentation. That second file in the file share box is a list of links for all the tools that we're going to look at today, so you could definitely um, download that so you can find the tools we look at today quickly. So with that, we want to actually start with um, a quick poll. Um, so we're going to go ahead and bring that up on the screen for you. And Julie and I are just wondering um, how familiar, familiar you all are with Career One Stop. Um, if that's something you've never heard of before, heard of the name but never used it, used it sometimes but not an expert, or you use it often. That's just interesting for us to hear. We'll give you some time to answer that. Great, it looks like we're mostly hovering around that. I mean, use it sometimes, but not an expert, and heard of the name, but not used it. So that's great, great for us to know. Okay, so why don't we move on then to um, that overview of Career One Stop for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Here's, um, oops. We'll move that along one more. Here is what the Career One Stop homepage looks like, and that is available at careeronestop.org. So Career One Stop is a comprehensive career education and job resource. We are national in scope, but we do serve all 50 states and the U.S. territories, so you are going to see data like wages or employment projections for state and local areas as well. We are sponsored by the U.S. Department of Labor, so you can be assured that we offer quality data and reliable resources. And our site and tools are free for you and your customers to use. There's absolutely no cost to use Career One Stop. I do want to go ahead and share my screen now because I think the best way to kind of understand what Career One Stop offers is to look at the live site. So we'll get that situated on the screen for you all. So here is the live Career One Stop website. And I think the best way to describe of what um, kind of the depth of information we offer is to kind of look at this, this um, main navigation across the top in blue. So those first three sections, again, um, cover our main content areas, explore careers, find training, and job search. And that's going to cover everything that you would assume, like career profiles and how you make career decisions to the different types of training and how you may pay for that, as well as all those job search tips, like how to write a resume, how to put a cover letter together, how to find job openings, everything you'd expect in those content areas. The next two sections are where we house all of our tools. So the first one, Find Local Help, is going to be where we have all of our workforce service finders. So that's going to cover, you know, getting people connected to American job centers, employment and training programs for specific audiences like Native American programs or youth programs, our community services like library finders or job club finders. We have um, finders to get connected to your workforce development and then unemployment sites in your state. And then that next section of tools are going to cover all of the content areas. So everything from career assessments and profiles to training finders, skills matcher, our job, different job finders, wage information, industry information, and then some state and local tools as well. And then that last section, resources for, so if we've put up any sites or content areas specific to an audience, this is where you would find those. And I also want to mention right up at the top, we have a link to translate the site in Spanish, so all of the content and um, labels on the site would translate. I want to bring us all the way down to the footer just to point out a couple additional things. This second column called Our Sites 
that's where, gonna be, where some of those specialty portals are going to be. And I want to point out two of them. Employment recovery and My Skills, My Future are two of them that we're going to look at today. So when we talk about those, um, the links that you would find them are in the footer. So I just want to point that out. Also, we have some great help information, common questions, where all of our data comes from. That's a um, typical question we get. Our news center is where you could sign up for our blog or get any of our outreach materials. And then the last link I want to point out is at the very bottom, and that's our Contact Us link. So if you have any questions after today or need to let us know um, something on the site you have a question about or needs updating, you can always use that link. That is monitored daily, so that is always the best way to get a hold of us after today. So we know that this is really quick and doesn't get at um, the complexity and all of the things on the Career OneStop website, but um, later in the presentation, Julie is going to show us a site where you can find a great overview video to learn more about what Career OneStop offers and um, to workforce professionals specifically. So with that, let's get started with our top 10 list. And our first tool, I think, is not going to be any surprise to anyone, and that's our Job Finder tool. So um, that's the first tool that we wanted to share for you for helping people get back to work. And we picked it um, for our list because it's a one-stop shop to find job openings for all types of job seekers. This is what our landing page looks like. And I would put in my keyword for job, where I'd put graphic designer, and then where I'd like to search. I'm using Colorado as our example today, but you could put a city or zip code in there as well. Job posting data on Career One Stop is from four different sources. The default is always the National Labor Exchange, or NLX, and that is co-sponsored by the Direct Employers Association and the National Association of State Workforce Agencies. It's going to be the most comprehensive feed, so it's going to have the most job openings in it. And it's going to include both your state job bank data as well as openings sent directly from employers. You can also search for feeds from Career Builder, Indeed, and ZipRecruiter, and I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Job posting data is updated daily on our site, so every night we pull in the new data, so um, it's updated quite frequently. And I do want to mention for all of the tools that we looked at today, there are, there's this box on the left-hand side either called About This Data or Help. And that's always a great place to go to provide more detail about the tool itself or the data source or sources of the tool. So just um, a quick note that that's always there to help you. Okay, so if I put my criteria in and I click on See Jobs here, I'm going to show you what that results page um, would look like. So I see right from the start that I have found 677 jobs through the NLX feed for graphic designer in Colorado. I can see in my results I have a job title, the company that posted that job, the location, and then the date it was posted. And I can use this drop down, down up here to sort by um, some of the columns if I wanted to resort that data. I also want to mention at the bottom of our results tables, this is something that's going to be found on all the tools we look at today, too. I always have the option to download my results or a detail page. Now, for job finders, since we get this data from another source, we do have some limitations about how many you can download at one time, but that's all spelled out for you right here. And then I can always download in Excel as a PDF, a Word document, or a rich text format. So that's just a nice little feature on all the tools. Okay, so back up to my results. It's possible that this is just too many results to um, kind of go through. So I have a lot of different options on the left-hand side to either change my search or filter it. This first component is where I could change that keyword I used to search. I could um, get, uh, I could change the location or get a little bit more specific with a city or a zip code. And then here's the drop-down if I wanted to change that source. So again, if I wanted to change to Career Builder, Indeed, or ZipRecruiter, I could do that from right here. I could also do a new search based on a kind of either a related occupation or maybe that keyword um, kind of fits a lot of different occupations, so I can refine that search right here. And then I get the options to filter. And this first filter is one that's been very popular during the pandemic, and we just recently added it, so it might be not something that you're familiar with, 
But what it is doing is filtering out those jobs that have at least one keyword like virtual, work from home, or telecommute. So you can imagine some um, of our job seekers have a preference to work from home, or for some it might be more of a requirement. So this is just a great filter to, um, to get those jobs on my list that have um, that keyword in it. Two things I'll note is that this filter is only for the NLX feed, so you won't see it on the other ones. And then also, um, we still encourage job seekers to read the description of the job, because we know those terms can mean different things to different employers. So we still need to do our due diligence to make sure it's matching up with our expectations for that work. I can also see other options on the left-hand side to filter. I could filter by company name. I could get more specific, again, because I selected Colorado, I might want to get more specific in my location, or I could um, filter by the date it was posted. So it was, was my first time to this tool, I might want to check um, openings that were posted a while ago, but if I come to it frequently, one or three days back might be enough for me to filter and look at that list. Okay, now back to my list. I want to see what the detail looks like, so I'm just going to click on one of the job title names. And here is the detail. So this will change, too, based on what the employer has provided, but some will provide a good description and responsibilities or qualifications. Some will get into the benefits offered on the job. Um, again, that will really vary by employer. But then the job detail page will also be the, where this apply button is. So that will take me out either to the state job bank or the employer who listed that job. So I can do that right from the detail page. So that is our job finder tool. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Julie for our next tool. Thanks. Our second tool to connect with job openings is mm -hmm. the business finder. And that is, um, you're going to find that in, under the toolkit. You check out the toolkit and then go uh, to the job heading and it will be under that, uh, under that heading. So the business finder is on our list because it's an outstanding tool to support a targeted job search. And I bet you've tried to get your customers to do them. <laughs> I certainly have in my work in uh, career planning. Um, it can be so much more efficient, so much more exciting, so much more targeted and focused, gives people so much better results. But it's kind of tough. It's a tough sell, and I really think this business finder can help make that easier. So what is a targeted job search? If you're not familiar with that idea, it puts the job seeker in the driver's seat. Um, they need to clarify the type of organization they really want to work for, and then pursue contact directly with that organization, whether there are current job openings advertised or not. So that's what we're focused on here. Um, it facilitates that employer research, uh, the business finder will, and narrowing down the organizations that they might want to target in their search. Um, you can gather some basic information. And we'll go ahead and enter the tool um, in just a minute, and I'll, I'll show you some of that information you can get. But a couple things I want you to know here. Um, the business finder lists more than 12 million organizations. And I think for reemployment purposes, it's probably easiest to start in that search box uh, where we see keyword or code with entering an occupation that they uh, are pursuing, that the customer is pursuing. Um, you can also search by industry. That list of industries below will uh, drop down and give you um, options. So I think that can help if you don't really know what to call what you're looking for. This can give you some prompts, and you can get to the uh, get to the neighborhood of what you might be looking for, and then narrow down and filter results once you're inside the tool. Uh, so that can help too. Uh, then you're going to need a location, and and then uh, choose the search. A piece you need to know: this is proprietary, so we license it from Data Axle. You can see over there on the left. Um, that's formerly Info Group. You might be familiar with that. It is CAPTCHA protected. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into the tool and show you some results. For the example we're demonstrating, um, I used the term accountants, accountants and auditors, and I'm looking up in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I think kind of an interesting point is if you use a zip code for your location search, 
Um, that gives you the ability to choose your radius for the businesses listed. So you can choose as close as like a five mile radius from your zip code. And I think that can be really helpful for you know, larger cities that have multiple zip codes to get closer to where you need to be. And I think about folks who use public transportation, um, I want to really narrow my results if I'm on public transportation to my closest businesses. So using that radius feature is really helpful. If I use a city like I did here, I will have the opportunity to, um, or rather, I'm sorry, if I chose a location of a state, I will be able to filter by city. So there's some different options as you, um, in, in terms of how you search. Um, so I'm looking here at the results, and you can see that I have found, wow, 9,600 businesses <laughs> in Cleveland, Ohio, that in some fashion are associated with accountants and auditors. So I'm going to see my business name on the, uh, on the left of my results um, section, and I get an address and uh, description, the industry that that business is in, um, number of employees, and then distance from my search term. So you can sort by any of these um, parameters. I think probably, to me, distance is one of the most useful because, again, if I'm uh, wanting to sort for the businesses closest to me, I can do that with the, uh, by clicking on that uh, distance term, and then it will give me the option. Um, one thing I want you to know, and I didn't know this before I started working for websites, sorting, in other words, clicking on these different parameters on the results, that will just keep all that 9,600 list intact, but put your parameter first. If I want to filter going to the uh, options on the left, that's going to actually cut my list down. And especially if you're thinking about downloading or printing your options, you're really going to want to filter to make sure that you don't have a crazy long uh, list with a bunch of irrelevant um, items on it. Um, if I'm searching by occupation, you can see over here on the left, I can go ahead and scan that list of description, or I find industry a bit more helpful. Um, if I click on more, that's going to expand my list to all the industries represented. And that's a great place to kind of scan and get a sense of what are the types of industries that these businesses are in associated with accountants. And I might then want to choose those that I'm most interested in. And that will narrow my list down to just those. Uh, down below, the filter by employees, I'm going to say this is one area where people tend to have very strong ideas. Definitely there's some agnostic folks who could work for any size company, but people really tend to vary. Um, they might prefer that smaller employer, and so they're going to want to just choose to filter their results by those a lower number of employees. Um, I think smaller employers, I think about versatility, that you tend to be, need to be a bit of a jack of all trades because smaller organizations don't have uh, the, the bandwidth to <clears throat> silo the jobs as much. Um, might be a lower key environment, um, might be greater flexibility. Those are some, you know, some notions associated with smaller employers. Larger employers, probably more room to advance and grow. Um, might be stronger benefits package. So these aren't hard and fast rules, but these are some of the associations a lot of folks have. So that's a great filter to choose. Um, I'm going to go to a detail page next to get you a sense of what you're going to be able to see on each of these businesses. And these vary a bit. Um, in this case, I chose Billings and Company CPAs. Once I get to this detail page about a business, um, there's some new information that I couldn't see previous, and that includes a phone contact, <clears throat> a key contact person, which can be terrific. Um, I can explore connecting with that person on social media or at least um, look them up, um, maybe reach out and contact. Uh, I'm going to be able to see a, uh, a website if they have one. Shockingly, some businesses still don't, <laughs> but very small organizations especially don't. So I can take, that, take a look at that website <clears throat> and use that to go gather lots of information and decide whether they really fit my target criteria for my, uh, my targeted job search. I can also find uh, when they were established, 
and I can get uh, directions and map from my location. So lots of useful information to um, support that targeted job search. Next tool on our list, the Professional Association Finder. <clears throat> this is one more way to learn about job openings on Career One Stop. Um, and where do I find it? It's again under Toolkit. And I would go under the Toolkit and then head over to Training, that, that heading uh, of Training, and it will be there on that list. This tool, we're proud of it. It is unique to Career One Stop. We have collected and maintained this data, and currently we have around 2,500 associations uh, listed. Um, professional associations, if you're not that into them, they really are a great source to find out about job openings that may not be as widely advertised as on some of these larger job uh, posting networks. And they can also be a great way, a great way to meet up with a network of people. Um, many associations list job postings on their websites, and we'll show you in a bit how you can find out about that. And some of them restrict access to members only. Um, so again, a lot fewer eyes looking. Um, a second benefit, professional associations are a great networking source. They, um, the folks in there are often people who are active in the field, have broad networks, and so by joining, you can get access to connect with other members around exploring job prospects. Third benefit, they typically offer meetings, trainings, uh, conferences, um, professional volunteering opportunities. Um, currently, that's both online and in person, probably that way to stay. Um, so these are a really useful way to develop your knowledge, your working vocabulary. You know, what's the language? What's the jargon? What do people talk about? Uh, in this field, and contacts, develop those contacts. And I think for people who are in that reshuffling category, who are looking at new mm -hmm. career options, this can be a way to start to explore uh, a new career in the industry. Um, I want to make a note, because I think some of us are put off by the uh, membership fee, joining fees. Um, a lot of associations do offer discounted rates for students, for folks in financial hardship or other special circumstances, so don't be put off by that. Um, encourage your folks to explore that. Um, so that's my sell point on professional associations. How to use this tool. Really easy, enter the name of an industry, uh, an association that you know about, um, or an occupation. And that will take you to the results page. In this case, I'm going to stay with my accountant um, example previously. So here's your results page. It's going to show your list of all the national associations in our database that relate to the search term. Um, knowing that some of these searches are going to generate mm -hmm. really long lists, you can narrow those results using those filters on the left, occupation and industry, um, and that will shorten your list. Here we have uh, a manageable number, 24. Um, here is what I was referring to earlier. If I see this career center, I see a check mark in that column labeled career center, that tells me that that professional association website does do some kind of job posting or other career guidance. Uh, and you can go out and look at that. So that's a really useful sorting mechanism for prioritizing perhaps the associations you want to look at. Um, let's check out one of the associations. Just click on the link uh, of the association name, and that will take you out to their site. Here we're looking at the American Institute of CPAs. Um, and you can see in their, their navigation that career guidance, that second topic over. Um, so this is where I would go to check out their job posting. Um, if I've explored some, I'm, I'm done, this is enough. I can just close out that window and I will go back to my uh, go back to my results list and can explore more. And with that, back to Trisha for our next poll. Thanks. So we're going to pull up another poll question for you. We have another question for you all. And this is really going back to the idea that we presented at the beginning about this 
um, reshuffle. And we're curious to know if you are seeing a reshuffle going on with the job seekers you are working with. So do they want to change occupations? Do they want to change industries? Are they looking to change both? Or are you just not seeing that um, with the people you are working with? Great. It's great to see all the responses. Thank you for participating. It looks like right now a majority of you are seeing that job seekers are wanting to change um, possibly both occupation and industry. So that's great for us to know. And really is a good segue into our next tool that I will bring up. So thank you for those answers. So our next tool can definitely be used to help someone navigate the current job market with the skills and knowledge that they already have. So our tool coming in at number four is My Skills, My Future. And just as a reminder, that was one of those um, links in the footer of Career One Stop that you could um, use that to navigate here, or you could always put myskillsmyfuture.org into your browser window. So this is what the home page looks like for this tool. And to start, what I do is I enter a job that I've had in the past. Um, it could be my last job or any of the jobs that I've had in the past um, where I'd like to see where I could leverage those skills and knowledge areas. So for this example today, I put in medical assistant. And when I um, click on find my career matches, this is the page of results that I see. And so these are going to be, um, in my list, are 20 different careers with similar skills and knowledge areas to medical assistance. So right away, I see a lot of information is listed to help me kind of compare these matches. And we're going to dig into those details a little bit later when we look at a career profile, but I'll just mention that they're there to kind of help in that comparison. My results are going to be ordered by best match. So it's not surprising that I'm seeing other healthcare occupations on the list, like pharmacy technicians or physical therapy assistants. But I see some other type of occupations too, um, you know, maybe somewhat related to healthcare, healthcare or completely um, different. So that's kind of nice to see that variety of occupations on my list. One great feature of this tool is I can generate a new list based on some work preferences. And I'm going to do that with this narrow your results button right at the top of the page. When I open that up, I see some options of um, things I could delete completely from my list. So maybe um, I have a physical limitation that limits my ability to walk and stand for long periods of time. So I could select that item and um, have those removed from my list. And you'll see the other categories there, you know, they range <laughs> in, you know, maybe public speaking isn't for me or I don't want to work outdoors. So there's just some different categories. And again, when I click on the show results, it's not filtering out those occupations from my list. It's actually generating a new list of 20 matches for me. So um, I'm still going to get 20 different careers to consider. So as I'm reviewing this list and seeing what might be of interest, I am thinking that speech language pathology assistance looks kind of interesting to me. So another great feature of this tool is this compare skills link. And when I click on that, what I'm going to get is kind of a quick summary of how the, or the main differences between this occupation of interest and my prior occupation of medical assistant. So right away, I can compare the mid-level salary. So I can see speech-language pathology assistance earned just a little bit more than my previous job. I can see the skills and knowledge areas these two occupations share, like critical thinking and reading comprehension. And then I can see the gaps between these two careers, highlighting the skill and knowledge areas that people working in my desired job generally need a higher level of than people working in my current job. So right away, I see um, the knowledge areas of psychology and English language are higher in the job that I'm interested in than my previous job. And if I wanted to learn more, there's links off to find training for this gap. So any training related to that knowledge area would be listed there. 
I can also um, compare the typical level of training between those two careers, again, linking out for training if that was a necessity. I can see um, or get some information on license requirements and link out to find licensing agencies for the career of interest, and then the same for certifications. So if I'm still interested in this career and learning more about it, I would go back to my career list page um, to get more information. And actually, I can do that by clicking in this um, navigation bar, Selected Career. And that's going to bring up that career profile, um, as I mentioned, if I want to get more information. And I decided to enter a state, um, Arizona, for this profile, just so the labor market information in my profile is updated for that state. And again, like our other tools, I could choose a city or a zip code as well. So from this profile page, I can do things like watch a um, video for this career if I wanted to see what people do on the job. I could look at that. And those have been updated in the last couple of years, so they really show um, updated tools and technology that people use on the job. I could read a description. I could also see some preliminary labor market information, like how many people are currently employed in this occupation in Arizona, what the projected annual openings are, and then typical, typical hourly wages and typical annual salary for that career. I could also, from this profile, link out to see the job listings, and that would go to the job um, finder tool we were looking at before, or to find businesses with the business finder Julie just showed us. I can look at typical training, including any work experience or on-the-job training requirements. And then also some typical job duties, so what would I be doing on the job? And then tools and technology, most often used on the job. And then also some more general um, links off to additional information. So all of this career profile information helps me decide whether or not I want to pursue this as a job choice. And again, I could go back to my career matches page and look at other career profiles of interest as well. So all of the um, matching data and most of the information in the profile for this tool is based on ONET, or the Occupation Information Network. Labor market is from Bureau of Labor Statistics and a couple of original career one-stop sources for this tool as well. And if you're curious for this tool to learn more, there is a question mark at the top of the page, and that's where you could go um, to learn more about what's being shown on the page and then also the data sources. Okay, so that is um, my skills, my future. So our next tool coming in at number five is our salary finder. So many people are familiar with occupation profiles, and that includes some wage information, like the one we were just looking for, looking at with My Skills, My Future. But we also wanted to show you a tool um, today that focuses specifically on wages. And we included this in our top 10 list for today because it can be useful during that salary negotiation phase of job search. And if I was looking for this tool, I would go in our toolkit under Wages and Salary Finder. So that's where you could find it. This is our landing page. And what I've loaded in here for our search today is graphic designers. And I've um, picked 55101, which is the zip code in St. Paul, Minnesota. And when I load that page and click on search, this is the chart that will show. And the first thing I see on this chart are the low, median, and high annual salaries for graphic designers. And I see it for the metropolitan, or the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro area, which is where that zip code matches up to be, as well as a comparison to the United States. So for salary negotiation, this salary range can be helpful to get a sense of the range of wages for the career. So the median is the salary where 50% of the workers earn more and 50% of the workers earn less. And while the low end doesn't necessarily reflect starting or entry level wages, it can be a good indicator of what people with less experience can earn. So it's just good to have that range to compare to an offer that I've been given. I have a couple options to manipulate this um, display. I can change it to hourly wages with this link right up here at the top of the chart in case um, that data is a little bit more meaningful for a comparison. I can also um, change it to a table view, and that's kind of nice 
because it adds Minnesota in there for me, so I can do that comparison as well. And it includes both the hourly wages and the annual salaries, so I can do that comparison right from this table as well. There's also a map view if that would be of interest. So one other um, thing I want to show you from this tool is this um, link right at the bottom that says, do you want to compare salaries with, another, with other occupations or locations? And if I click on that, it's actually going to bring me to a new tool called Compare Salaries. But again, I just, uh, we wanted to show this um, just because it is a way to um, compare salaries in different locations and not just for the state and national roll-ups that we were seeing on the Salary Finder tool. And again, or if I wanted to compare easily um, salaries with different careers. You can compare average salaries for up to five different occupations and five different locations for this tool. So really quickly, um, you know, it carried over my graphic designer in 55101, since that's what I was looking at on the salary finder. And I could um, enter in another location, like um, in Minnesota, if I was also considering living in Duluth, or maybe uh, neighboring state, if I could spell Green Bay, Wisconsin, we'll put that on our list too. And I'm just going to show you what that display looks like. So right away I see, again, for my occupation of interest, graphic designers, and those three locations that I've selected, the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro area, Duluth metro area, and then the Green Bay area. So that's just a, another nice way to see that. But then, as we were saying, you can also add an occupation. So let's say graphic designers of interest, but maybe web development is as well. I could use this left-hand box to just modify my search really quickly. And now I'm seeing those three areas again, but for both of those two occupations. So you kind of get the idea of how you could get up to five occupations in five locations there. I have the same options to um, switch between annual salaries and hourly wages, and so that I could do very quickly. I can also get that table view. Oh, my you know, navigation's getting in the way right there for you. But you can see that I can switch over to that table view and see the low, median, and high um, wages in this case. Okay, I'm going to bring it back to chart view because I want to show you one more thing as a way to manipulate this. So right now we're looking at occupations on the left-hand side and the wages in the bar chart. But up here, there's two different options. So right now I'm looking at compare by location. I could flip that chart and compare by occupations as well, if that was more meaningful to me. Now I'm seeing those three locations on the left side of the chart, and then the two occupations are the bars. So that's just a fun way to show you the different ways that you could manipulate the salary data and get what you're looking for. So again, while the salary finder is helpful during salary negotiation, this tool could be especially helpful if you're working with someone considering to relocate as well. For both of these tools, data is collected by each state through the Occupation and Employment and Wage Statistics Survey, or OEWS, and that is conducted by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And those data are updated on Career One Staff annually. That's it for Salary Finder, and back over to Julie. Great. Uh, I've got the number six tool, and this is another tool to help navigate the current job market. And that is our career and industry report. Um, so you're going to find these under toolkit. And then for the career reports, you'll look under the careers heading. And then we've got several reports uh, down there at the bottom. And then industry, the industry heading is where you'll find the industry report. We're just going to look at a couple of <clears throat> uh, the career reports today. Um, these reports, I think they're so valuable because of mm -hmm. how they highlight hiring trends. This is where you can find information about you know, which industries and occupations are growing. Uh, how does my occupation look? How does it kind of rate um, relative to others? Uh, I can search by state or nationally uh, up in that your search box. We're going to be looking at national data today, but if I want to search by location and choose my state, um, that's going to give me a very different set of results. So that's uh, useful information. 
Um, let's see, we're going to start with uh, the one that we have up, most openings. So what are we looking at on this page? Uh, these are the occupations that were expected to have the most openings over a 10-year period. Um, for all of these reports, that's going to relate to 2019 to 2029 nationally, and that's data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And for state data, we use information from each state's labor market information office, and that, those data are uh, 2018 to 2028. Um, you probably know this if you use labor market information. There is a time lag on data collection and publication. And so at this time, numbers for some occupations and industries are going to differ significantly from projections um, <clears throat> as the economic recovery uh, resolves. That will shift. But some of, this, uh, some of these numbers are going to remain on track very closely. So as that new data becomes available, of course, we will publish revised numbers. Um, but even now, the data from these reports can really help customers learn valuable information for career planning. Um, we can see on this report we've got a rank, and that rank is going to relate to whatever that report's focus is. Here it's the most openings, number one most openings occupation on other reports that will relate to their uh, parameters. And while we're here, let's just look at those other career reports over on the left. You can, you can see uh, highest paying careers. We have that. We have fastest growing careers. Um, we have declining employment. And we also have largest employment. So those all offer different views on the data. Um, let's see. So as I'm looking at the report, I'm going to see the occupation title, and that is linked directly to our occupation profile. So if you get excited about an occupation you see on the list, you're able to click on that and go out to uh, a great deal of detail and information. Um, 2019 employment numbers, that's total employment nationally or for the state that you're uh, selecting. Annual projected job openings. Earnings, we go from one to four dollar signs to get a relative sense of uh, typical earnings. And then the typical education column relates to the education you need to enter the field in most cases. Um, let's see. I, where am I on my, um, I can take a look at the filters uh, on the left. I love the typical education filter uh, up on the left. That gives me a chance to select mm -hmm. my current level of education and show only those occupations that have a lot of openings that are at my education level. So that can be a way to narrow this list down quickly as well. Um, up on the top right, sort by, um, I can sort this list a variety of ways. Uh, it, it's going to default to the highest number of job openings. That's what you're opening to. Um, I can choose to see the jobs with the highest earnings that also have a lot of openings. Um, typical education and, and so on. I can sort it alphabetically and that way I can look for my own occupation title and see where that rates on this list. Um, I did just a quick experiment. I think it is pretty fascinating to see how much this differs by state. I took, I took a look at Iowa and farmers and agricultural managers. That's the top openings occupation. Um, I checked out Tennessee just kind of randomly, and that same occupation shows up 47. So they're, they're really different. Um, I want to show you another occupation, a rather career report, and that is fastest growing. And I'm showing you this to kind of help build that picture of trends. Um, as I said, each one of these reports mm -hmm. offers a distinct perspective. Um, so what is this list? It's really the occupations expected to have the largest rate of growth over 10 years. And so nationally, the fastest growing occupation you can see in position one is wind turbine service technicians with a whopping 61% change over a 10-year period. That's a lot. That's a lot of change. Um, the other occupations that you see that, that come up in the first 10 results are in healthcare, not a surprise that healthcare jobs are growing really quickly. Um, 
There's another renewable energy and a few STEM careers. So this is great information for my career planning. And I want to also say context is so meaningful. Um, how many wind turbine service technicians do you think there are in the whole country? 7,000 as of 2019. So if you start from a small total number of jobs like that, for that example, even with the 61% growth, that number is expected to grow by 4,300 over a 10-year period. So this is a really different story. If you take a look, let's go down to number six, home health and personal care aides. That's starting out with almost 3,500,000 jobs in 2019. So over a 10-year period, even though it's six on this list, it's going to add over a million jobs. So it's helpful. The fastest growing is, is really intriguing. It's a really important factor to look at, but we want to look at, um, look at these uh, with a critical eye and to put them in context. So next, industry reports. That's our number seven tool. Why is this on our list? It's really valuable to look at industry trends. It's not real glamorous, right? Do, your, do you ever have uh, customers coming in saying, I, I demand to know industry trends? Probably not. Maybe you do. Um, but we saw this, the value of this kind of information illustrated in the pandemic so, uh, so directly. Um, for example, when the hospitality industry closed down to a large extent, and that reduced many different types of jobs within that one industry. The same notion is true now as the economic recovery has really accelerated hiring for so many different types of uh, hospitality jobs. So another reason to look at industry data is that many occupations occur in a variety of industries, like I think about accountants, uh, IT roles, administrative roles, human resources, sales, uh, customer service, many types of uh, occupations are available in a variety of Industry. So paying attention to industry trends, that can help me focus my job search on an industry that's really thriving and growing and take my career skills where uh, that will pay off in my location. Um, I chose mm -hmm. this report. This is the highest paying industry because we know how much job seekers are curious to see where the highest paying uh, data are, where the highest paying jobs and so on. Um, this report lists the industries with the highest average weekly wages, so they total up all of the wages for all of the occupations within that one industry and then average that out. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of variation within an industry for different jobs, but it gives us a really good comparative view of industries. And so scanning this list, we can really conclude we're seeing a lot of financial services categories here. So those industries seem to pay higher wages than others. That's something that we can kind of uh, conclude. Um, we also offer industry reports for, uh, on the left column, you can see, I can choose fastest growing industries, largest employment, uh, declining employment, and uh, get some more data that way. So with that, Tricia, please show us the eight tools. Okay, will do. So coming in at number eight is our certification finder. And it's one of our favorites just because it's unique to Career One Stop. And why we included this tool on the list is because it would help when working with job seekers who want to refresh their credentials or move to a different direction during this time. Like I said, it is unique to Career One Stop, so our staff collects and maintains the data and it is updated on a regular basis. So unlike the other tools that we've looked at today, when I put a keyword in, um, to do the search for this tool, it's actually looking at certification names, organizations, industry, and occupations. So it's kind of doing a wider search than some of our other tools. So for today, I have put in welder. And this, if I were to click on search, is what my search results page would look like. So right away, I have found 58 certifications from 13 different organizations related to Welder. So right away on my list, I'm seeing a couple things, the name of the certification, the organization, and the type. I um, want to mention these icons that you're seeing after some of the titles. Um, this chili pepper, I'm going to describe in just a second. It's our in-demand indicator, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. 
these um, letter icons correspond to an organization that certification is related to or the organization or program that certification is accredited by. And so those letters correspond to this legend at the bottom um, that gives you a little bit more information and then a link to read more specifics. So I mentioned there is this column with type. We have five different types of certification, core, advanced, specialty, skill, and then one called product slash equipment. Now, core and advanced are going to be those that are most related to the occupation um, that is matched to either that keyword or occupation title you've entered. Core is going to relate to those certifications with the least amount of prior education or work experience required, and then advanced will require more education. Specialty type is for those certifications that correspond to a specialty within the occupation, not surprising. So for example, on our list, we see this certified robotic arc welding operator and technician. So that would be a robotic specialty within the area of welding. Skills is going to be um, tests that are for basic skills that may or may not be related to a product. And I think CPR is a really good example of that. Um, occupations may require CPR, but it's not a specific product. And then product slash equipment then is going to be testing for knowledge about the use of proprietary software or products. And I think like IBM or Cisco are good examples of that. Now, as always, on the left are going to be the options to redo or filter my search. So I get first that related occupations in case I wanted to do a new search. And then I get those filter options. And that first one is that in-demand filter. So what we do is twice a year we kind of um, look at all the job postings by employers and specifically what they're asking um, as far as certifications in their job openings. So um, we put that chili pepper or that in-demand indicator on those certifications that get mentioned the most by employers in job openings. Right now we just updated the chili pepper that you see now is from analysis in April of 2021. So again, what certifications were found in job openings at that time. Okay, so then back up to our list, I want to show you what a detailed page looks like. So I'm going to click on the Certified Welder page. And what I get is a little bit more of a description of what that certification is, the certifying organization, and then some details like um, are there education and training requirements, um, does it require an exam? Do I have to renew? Some basic information. And then I can always use that link out to the certifying organization to get more details. So that is our certification finder. And next we'll move on to our tool number nine, and that is our state resource finder. And that's going to be located on our employment recovery portal. So again, um, that you would find that in the footer of the Career One Stop website, Employment Recovery. Now, we launched this Employment Recovery website during the pandemic to provide one-stop access to unemployment and job search resources most needed during the pandemic and employment recovery. So what this State Resource Finder tool is provides um, local resources for job search barriers and targeted services. So they are going to be website resources. In this example, I've picked Ohio as our location, and this will be what the results look like. So unemployment insurance was obviously a focus of this site, um, so that was the first link that we brought up for unemployment insurance in Ohio. And then to find more benefits, I would open that second section. Most states put up a specific website for benefits um, specifically for ind individuals impacted by COVID-19. So we included that state resource link, and then also some more general ones. And then we get into those um, barriers to employment. So housing links for that state, healthcare links in Ohio, job search including the state job bank and um, the local American Job Center, training and education links, and then links for general career information as well. So again, those will help when you need to um, provide just general website resources. 
Now this, um, this is not a tool we're going to look at today, but I just want to also mention that sometimes we need to refer people to those in-person um, supports or more direct services. And I'll, I want to remind you, if we go back out to the Career One Stop homepage, there's that whole Find Local Help section to um, direct people for targeted services. So for example, I'm just going to really quickly click on Reentry Program Finder, and it's going to remember um, or actually here, we'll just put Ohio back in there again. And just really quickly, I just want to show you, it's found 84 reentry programs in Ohio. So programs are organizations that offer reentry assistance. Um, it's going to, you know, give me the name, the location, some contact information, phone, email, hours it's open. Some of them will talk about if they do um, virtual or in-person services. So there's just some great information. Um, so I want to remind you that um, those are out there as well. Okay, so now we'll turn it over to Julie for our last tool. Great. <clears throat> we actually have a poll. And for this poll, we'd like to get a picture of how you're delivering employment services currently. Are you focused on in-person, on, on uh, virtual, or some combination of both, mainly in-person or mainly virtual? Wow, it's facing up to be a little bit of uh, focus on a combination of both, but mainly virtual, but uh, mainly in person also is pretty substantial. Thank you. That's really informative. Mm -hmm. That is something that we have not been able to put our hands on. So this is really useful information for us. Um, I think that our workforce system has, has to have so much agility at this point, right? Our service delivery has been so challenged over the last year and a half, so it looks like you are really responding with a lot of agility to conditions as they occur in your area. Um, I think that, that that information helps make our last tool really relevant. Um, it's, for, it's useful for both virtual and in-person services. This is a page of resources that we developed for workforce professionals. Um, as Tricia mentioned in her introduction, uh, at the top, you're going to find that overview video that we created to give workforce professionals a quick tour from their perspective of what's available on the site and how you can use it when working with your customers. Um, next down, this webinar series is the previous Workforce GPS webinars that we've offered specifically to support delivering virtual services using Career One Stop um, material. So each one has a recorded webinar that you can watch, uh, a PowerPoint that you can flip through or adapt. The user guide is homework assignments, very, very step-by-step -step for a user to uh, what information that they should use on each page that we show in order to accomplish the topic that that uh, describes, and then the list of web pages that we used. So we've got you know, finding immediate employment is one of our topics there, job search for new college grads, changing occupations or industries in this great reshuffle, um, uh, working with folks who have a criminal record or who are currently incarcerated. So there's some great topics there for you to scan. Um, additional curriculum, these are really just there for you to adapt for your own use in workshops or job clubs and so on, um, however they can be helpful to you. Um, under the Career One Stop resources, we link out to our outreach materials. And so there you can find flyers, brochures, posters, and some other presentations uh, for your use. Um, the blog is, uh, we publish that, we write that and publish that uh, in-house weekly. You can subscribe to it or just check it out. Uh, and then our web API page, that's where you can learn how to link to us or customize our tool for your own website. So that's a great resource. Um, and I don't think I mentioned that is under resources for in the top navigation. That's how you're going to find it, resources for, and then uh, click on the career advisor. Um, as we wind down, we would like to get your ideas for future webinar topics for Career One Stop. So please take a moment in the poll uh, to give us your thoughts and ideas. And 
plan on seeing us back here uh, with some of the topics that you have in mind that would be especially useful to you around career one-stop topics. We'll give you just a minute to uh, type in some answers. This is really helpful to us. This is great. Terrific ideas. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, go ahead and keep entering, but if something else comes in mind when we close the poll, um, please go ahead and enter it in the chat. That will continue to be open, and we will get all of that information. Uh, that will get to us. Um, we do want to make sure we leave time for questions. So. Uh, here is our contact information that we wanted to be sure to give you. Um, keep in mind, Trisha and I genuinely welcome your questions or thoughts, so feel free to reach out to us um, at uh, our contact information that we're going to display. Um, the, uh, this, this slide is part of today's PowerPoint, so this is, you, you will be able to reach us, even if this disappears before you're ready. Um, but do feel free to reach out to us. And um, I think with that, we do want to get to your questions and have time for that. So let's go to questions. OK. Um, Julie and Chelsea, thank you very much for an incredibly informative tour around Career One Stop. Um, we have roughly 20 minutes, and we've got a good set of questions here that have come out through the, through the entirety of this presentation. Um, Tricia, the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Julie, the first question we have is, what year is college graduate data from on the career website, career one-stop website? I was puzzling over where uh, we might have referenced this because we don't publish uh, college graduate data on the site. Um, we do have uh, a table that indicates uh, how impactful a college degree is on lifetime earnings, um, but I'm sure that we didn't mention that in the mm -hmm. session. So, uh, Tricia, do you have an idea? It's possible that they might have been looking at our local training finder because we do um, we do list a school name, a program name, the length of that program, and then how many graduates um, came out of that program. And that is from IPEDS, the Integrated Post-Secondary Education Data System. I would have to look um, when we last updated on the site. I don't have that off the top of my head. but. Um, I think that's an annual thing that we, oh, here, I'm just scouring the website. It looks like that came from completions part of the iPads, and that was 2018 to 2019 data. That's the only thing I could think of, Julia, where we actually show a graduate number. Right. OK. Um, so let, let, Tricia and Julie, let's move on to the next question. Uh, Julie, let's stay with you for this one. Is there a way to filter by educational or experience level? I know from where that question came in, they were referring to the job finder. So I think they're asking, can we, can they go ahead and filter jobs by, uh, by education or experience, as well as the next question is by entry level position. Um, those are not filters that we currently offer on our job finder, but we are in process of evaluating some options. OK. Um, next question, uh, Tricia, we'll, we'll throw it to you. It's regarding the crosswalk between military and civilian skills. Um, person sends a lot of veterans to our site, and thank you for that. Um, is there a way, or do we have a military to civilian crosswalk on our website? 
So the closest thing we would have would be um, in our job section, we do have a veterans job matcher. Now it's doing that link underneath. So you're, you would put in a job that you had in the military or your MOS code, and then it'll match you to civilian careers. It doesn't really explain um, what that match is based on, which I think is what the question is getting at. It's more, like I said, doing that match underneath. But that would be um, the closest thing we have that I can think of. Julie, do you know of something else? That was my answer as well. OK. Um, I can chime in. Um, at ETA, we, we sponsor and support a lot of different websites when it comes to labor market information. Um, another mm -hmm. website we offer is called ONET, the Occupational Network. If you do a Google search on the words, my next move for veterans, um, that website will give you a very detailed um, list of M or MOS to civilian or civilian to MOS, and it also allows you to do some career exploration. For example, if your MOS is infantryman or infantry, sorry, infantry, your, the civilian equivalent almost always comes up as um, security guard or police officer, which a lot of guys, if they're in infantry, they don't want that. They want to do something else. Uh, both Career One Stop and ONET will help that person explore other options. But uh, yeah, ONET site, like my next move for veterans, can help you with that. So all right, enough for the commercial for ONET. Um, this question is about apprenticeship, uh, Tricia. Um, See, uh, is there apprenticeship training classes for renovation, repair, and painting, um, specifically in New York City or, frankly, anywhere else? Yeah, good question. Um, right now, what we do for apprenticeship information is direct people to apprenticeship.gov, which is another Department of Labor website to search for opportunities in their area. So I don't, unfortunately, know specifically about that class in New York City, but I would encourage you to go to apprenticeship.gov. I looked it up because oh. I had time. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go to apprenticeship.gov, go ahead and click on the Career Seekers tab, and that will give you a chance to take a look at a current apprenticeship jobs and programs. And I did enter your search term. And currently, there isn't anything directly uh, available um, the, the one New York apprenticeship actually refers to Puerto Rico, jobs that are in Puerto Rico. Um, but that is going to give you a wealth of uh, related options to explore apprenticeships. So it's really a great resource. All right. Thank you. Um, next question. Um, Tricia, we'll stay with you on this one about remote work. Um, remote work has become super popular. Can I search for positions that are only remote work on Career One Stop? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know if the person who asked that question um, saw the Job Finder tool when we were looking at that. And that one, you would have to start with a general job search, and then you can apply the filter for remote jobs only. But the other thing you could do on our employment recovery website is, um, and actually, if we could, um, Grace could we show the live site again, just real quick. Awesome, thank you so much. We'll just pop that up there. So employment recovery is that portal um, that you can find in the, oh, it's not showing the screen I'm showing. That's a little weird. <laughs> um, so I'm not able to manipulate what you're seeing on the screen. Nope. Okay. So I'll just talk it through. In our in our footer, if you go to the employment recovery portal and um, click on the homepage, there's a find a job now drop down, and the second option under that is called remote jobs. And so that's the way that you could just search the um, smaller pool of remote jobs. So you can use our main find a job to filter, or you can use just the remote job that is on that employment recovery portal. Trisha, Sorry, I can't I show you. Follow, can I ask a follow-up question? Um, on the live site, you have we have a search box in the upper right-hand corner. If somebody right. just typed, if somebody typed remote jobs in the search, 
box, would they land on it on that site as well? Let me see. Yes, they would. So um, it it would give me. <laughs> it's going to match me with uh, occupation first, but the first um, search link is remote jobs on the employment recovery website. So thanks, Don. That's a great tip too. Right. So just just another quick advertisement. Um, the search bar at the very top, right under the Espanol banner, is extremely helpful. And in the bottom right corner of Career One Stop, there is a very cute looking retro computer screen with a headset that is our chat bot. So you can also type in questions to the chat bot at the bottom if you're looking for something like remote jobs or jobs in California or something like that. It'll take you or point you in the right direction very quickly um, if you can't find it through, through our different portals. Okay, moving on. The next question, Tricia. Um, is the information also linked to burning glass data? It is not. So we are um, not linking out um, to burning glass right now. Okay. But, but I will say that burning glass does utilize our APIs extensively, actually a lot of Department of Labor APIs, um, to generate some of their labor market information as well. So. It, some of the information you see on burning glass is generated or is exactly the same as the information here on Career One Stop. Okay, uh, next question, uh, Julie. Uh, what about placement rates? Um, I guess this is in regard to helping people get jobs. Do we have any information on that? That is something we don't record. Uh, we don't have, uh, we don't currently have an account system or any way to track our users' activity. Um, we are introducing a user account uh, in the coming months, so you can look for that. But we don't have a way to uh, identify placement rates. Okay. Um, next question: Will all of these answers be sent out after the seminar? There, we are generating a lot of good information. Um, the answer to that question is yes. Um, remember, we have all of the URLs that were presented on today's presentation in the file share box in the lower right-hand side of the screen. Um, in a, probably a week or so, there'll be the entire transcript of our webinar will be posted online at Workforce GPS as well. So next question, uh, Tricia. Would you be able to filter the salary by level of education or experience? No, that's a great idea, but that is not a feature we have in our salary um, tools, unfortunately. So that's why we kind of talk about that range and why we like to show the different data points. Um, it's, again, not, not a direct indicator of entry level or high experience wages, but it does give you that range. But Great idea, it's something we could always put in our wish list, so thanks. Okay, uh, Tricia, let's stay with you for the next question. Um, would you be able to compare salaries with different zip codes rather than city and state? Yeah, absolutely, that one we can do. So in that tool where we could put five different locations, that compare salaries tool, you can put five different zip codes, and they don't have to be in the same um, state at all. They can be all over the U.S. So great question. Okay. Um, Tricia, uh, this one's for you. Is there one, it, I assume, website for working with persons with disabilities uh, to include you for a student just out of high school? Yeah, under the resources for um, in the main navigation, there is a section for workers with um, disabilities. It is just kind of our um, a collection of specific content resources that we have, um, but it's a it's a great place to start to look for that information for sure. Okay, um, Trisha, we'll stay with you for the next question. May we use and share? career one-stop information without authorization. And I'm assuming that also applies to the APIs. So um, though I believe that those answers would be um, 
different. So API does require um, a logo and a statement of use, and that is if you use um, our API, there's a terms and agreements and user guide, so that is all outlined what the um, requirements of using the API. Um, you, you can share or reuse data and content that's found on the website, and, but we just ask that you do cite Career One Stop as a source. And there is in our footer under help a really good page um, about how you would do a general citation or an MLA or APA citation. So that is out there in the footer. All right. Okay, uh, Tricia, we'll go to you for this one. Is job readiness slash soft skill training listed on Career One Stop? So um, we do have we don't have a great um, like finder tool for that. We do have some great pages in that find training um, section of you know ways to find the short term training like free and low cost or those kind of soft skill job readiness training. Um, but it's mostly content pages, I would say, and that again would be in our find training section. You know, Julie has done a lot around this. Do you have more to add, Julie? This is uh, an area that we are uh, developing. We will have um, content, written content on soft skills and job readiness, and we will be developing a series of videos that we're really excited to get into. It's a complex area, right? And it's also uh, somewhat subjective as you take a look at what does that mean? Um, but we're really excited to offer that because uh, it's such a top priority, for, especially for uh, for instance, folks coming out of incarceration or uh, young adults who don't have uh, a lot of work experience and, and others. So that is something that we plan to develop. Thanks for the question. Okay. Um, Julie, we'll stay with you for, for the next one. Uh, the person, first of all, apologizes, says, I'm sorry, I missed the tenth tool. Um, what were you providing for the tenth, tenth tool in your uh, exhibition. Okay, well first I'm impressed that you were taking notes. Well done. <laughs> um, the 10th tool <clears throat> is a career advisors page. You can find that under the resources for uh, tab in our navigation up on top. If you click on resources for you'll see that that menu drops down. I don't know if uh, we can show that right now. Um, but then the option is uh, career advisors. So it's just a single mm -hmm. page of resources uh, that we developed for workforce professionals. Perfect. Okay. Um, Tricia, this one's for you. Will Career One Stop offer the opportunity for people to create a free profile on the site so that information can be saved? I feel like maybe somebody planted this question because I love this one. Yes, <laughs> we are going to have this option, and it is in development right now, and we couldn't be more excited about it. This is something we've wanted on the site for a long time, and you're correct. It will be free. It will be a user account, and so people will be able to save and share their information um, from Career One Stop. Great. Okay, next question. Um, are you, I'm assuming Tricia and Julie and Mike, available for a presentation to our youth committee on the usage of this site? Yeah, I can take that. I would, I would say we're definitely interested. You know, um, doing webinars and virtual presentations have become a lot easier um, these days, so that's definitely something we can talk about if there's something we already have done. Um, that you can leverage or if it's something new you would like. So I would just encourage you to um, use our contact information or that contact us um, link on the site and we can work something out. All right. Um, let's see, next question. Okay, um, number 32. Um, Julie, can you show where you pulled up the remote jobs again or post the link? Great, yeah, absolutely. Um, Grace will post that uh, in our, I'm not sure where she's going to post it, but she's magic. But you can find it under that. If you go down to the footer, click on Employment Recovery. It's in that site. Um, oh, and Grace is 
letting us know that she did post it in the chat, so you should be able to see the link that we're about to show you. Uh, the employment recovery site, there is a find a job now um, tab in the navigation, and then you'll select uh, remote jobs. So that might sound a little bit tricky without being able to see it, but you, you do have the, um, the link right there uh, in your chat. Okay. Um, well, we, we are out of questions, and we are almost out of time. So if um, we'll take another minute, if there are any more questions, we'll uh, get them in the chat and, and read them aloud. Um, however, in the meantime, first of all, Grace, thank you very much uh, for your behind the scenes work. I know, as always, initially people are having a hard time either connecting or getting audio, and thank you for resolving those issues. Mike, um, I'm sure your fingers are on fire from answering a ton of questions that have come up to the chat. And Julie and Tricia, as always, uh, outstanding presentation. Um, and uh, thank you very much. So I don't see any more questions coming in. Uh, just let me, OK, cool. All right, so Grace, if it's okay with you, we will end uh, a couple minutes early. So I will flip it back over to you, Grace. Thank you. Mm -hmm.